Alright everyone, hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse and I am your host. If you are interested in discussions pertaining to Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, and what is quite often called also true in modern times, then I invite you to subscribe to my channel. And make sure you also click the bell and enable all notifications so you don't miss anything I release here. Don't forget to also check the description area for my Linktree link, which contains all the ways you can support Midgard Musings. And as you can see, today's video's format is a little bit different as I am experimenting with yet another format style. I'm anxious to hear what you think of it and if you'd like to see more videos in this sort of way. I am by no means retiring my presence in front of the camera or anything like that. I'm just sort of broadening the spectrum as it were of how my content is delivered. So be sure to drop your comment in the comment section below and let me know what you think of this video format and if you'd like to see more videos like this. So today's video is, as you can see, focused on a figure in Norse lore, although uh, who although has a pivotal and important role, has a very little else mentioned of him in surviving texts. I am, of course, referring to the best and brightest of the gods, the Shining One, Baldur. Now, for those of you who may be new to my channel, I invite you to check out the video annotated above wherein I talk a bit in depth about Baldur during one of the many deity discussion videos or episodes that I do periodically. This one uh, went back quite a ways. So today's video is going to briefly touch on some of the major points about Baldur that we know of. The main purpose of what we're discussing today are the differences and perhaps similarities found between the silent and noble god of Norse myth and the raging, vengeance-fueled pop icon of the most recent installment in the God of War video game franchise. So let's start with some of the mythology behind Baldur, just to sort of paint a picture and get our minds fresh in thinking about this particular god of the Aesir. Shining Baldur of the Aesir tribe was the loveliest and most beloved of all the gods in the Norse pantheon. Baldur exuded charm, and was so physically beautiful that he is said to have given off light. He was also described as the wisest of all the gods. As an arbiter of disputes, he settled feuds amongst gods and men alike. Baldur's death as a result of Loki's treachery is one of the central stories of Norse mythology. Universally lamented by the gods and by most of humanity, Baldur's demise precipitated Loki's imprisonment and helped set in motion the events of Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. The word Baldur, etymologically speaking, was originally thought to come from an old Norse word, Baldur, meaning old or brave. It could be, however, that the descriptor Baldur was named after the god rather than the god being named after it. Modern scholars have suggested that the name was rooted in the Proto-Indo-European word bel, meaning white. Words for white were commonly used to describe Baldur and other Norse deities. Such words were often translated as bright or shining, as their meaning referred not only to the color, but to the god's associated qualities, brilliance, beauty, clarity as well. Baldur's chief attributes were his fairness, his beauty, and likability. He possessed a great ship called Hringhorni, meaning ship with a circle on its stern, which was said to be the greatest ship ever constructed. Upon Baldur's death, the ship was turned into a massive funeral pyre for his body and set to drift downriver. Baldur rode a horse named Letfeti, who was sacrificed on his funeral pyre and dwelled in a palace known as Reidbli, the Broad Gleam. In the Grimnismal, found in the Poetic Era, which is usually referred to as the authoritative compilation of Old Norse poems, a disguised Odin described the Broad Gleaming abode of Baldur as the most peaceful of all places. And I quote, the seventh is Breidablik. Baldur has there for himself a dwelling set, in the land I know that lies so fair and from evil fate is free. 
Now, the story of Baldur's death is one of the best known and most critical myths in society. It was also one of the only myths to feature Baldur as an active character. The story is told often, so I will refrain from going into much detail here. Any Google search for Baldur's death is earning multitudes of results. So happy hunting and enjoy the story. Now let's talk a bit about the Baldur character in God of War. This video game has been available for long enough now that I feel a spoiler alert disclaimer should not be needed. Uh, but for those of you out there that simply don't follow pop culture of any sorts, or live under a rock as it were, and may have missed the memo, uh, spoiler alert ahead. Bear that in mind. And also remember that this character and the storyline in the video game um, is how the characters, or sorry, the creators of the video game franchise chose to depict the figure uh, and figures. So I wouldn't expect there to be a lot of accuracy in the description based off of the historical or, or stories from historical sources or stories from lore. Just bear that in mind as we continue. So Baldur is also called the Stranger and is the main antagonist of the 2018 video game God of War. He is the Norse god of light and the son of Odin, the goddess Freya. He is Odin's best tracker and is a vicious fighter as he is unable to feel pain or be harmed due to his curse has been placed on him. He is sent with his nephews, Agni and Odi, by his father, Odin, to hunt down and kill Kratos and his son, Atreus, as Odin believes them to be the bringers of Ragnarok. Baldur was born to Odin and Freya in Osgard, the half-brother of Thor and Tyr. He was described by Freya as a happy child and was to be known as the god of light due to his loving nature. A prophecy foretold Baldur would die a needless death, which would in turn begin the events of Ragnarok. Due to this and her love for him, Freya cast a spell on Baldur which made him invulnerable to any type of harm. This spell, however, had a horrific and un unintended side effect on Baldur, as it took all sense of feeling from him, such as pain, feelings of pleasure, and even joy. Years of not being able to feel turned Baldur cruel and uncaring. He grew to hate his mother for what she had done, as well as his place in life, as he could no longer feel the world around him. Now I want to pause for just a moment and kind of discuss a bit the characteristics of Baldur as mentioned here. Because this figure sounds anything but the gentle, loving, noble, and caring god of Norse myth, uh, who seemingly suffered and died silently due trick at the hand of Loki. And yet, the character traits of God of War's Baldur suggest that the Shining One was a victim of his mother's selfish act to try and protect him from all harm, thereby turning Baldur into a bitter and vengeful force set on destroying the ones who he believes are the harbingers of his own demise. And yet, I wonder, could it be that Baldur was really driven by Odin's commands? Or was he more focused on finding something, anything, to rid him of the curse placed on him and give him the chance to feel once again? In a way, God of War fills in a lot of gaps that the original stories of lore failed to fill in or just left out entirely. Baldur was once a kind and emotionally stable Aesir god. He ended up becoming an extremely cruel, ruthless, and sadistic monster after his mother Freya, out of misguided love, cursed him with the invulnerability spell, which nothing can kill him, at the cost of his ability to feel anything. To make matters even worse, Freya refuses to lift the spell out of fear of his death, which sadly severed the bond between mother and son. The invulnerability curse soon took its toll on his sanity and turned him into the emotionally unstable monster he was portrayed as in the game. I also find it worth noting that mythology and poetic license aside, the uh, God of War spin on, on Baldur almost seems to favor 
the Saxo Grammaticus variation of the same character in Saxo's Gesta Danorum, Deeds of the Danes, a literary work, wherein Baldur is depicted as a demigod who rivals with King Holder, both in war and for the love of a woman named Nana, who was Holder's foster sister. If you read the Icelandic Eddas, uh, the Poetic Edda, the Prose Edda, any of that uh, sources, you will know that Nana is the name of Baldur's wife those literary sources. In Saxo's writings, Baldur and Hoder fought, eventually with Baldur winning easily at first on the battlefield and then eventually losing in single combat as Hoder wielded his sword named Mistletoe, Baldur's Bane as it were. So to me, Saxo's depiction of Baldur is that of a more human-like figure, subject to feelings of passion, jealousy, and other such emotions. The Norse mythology stories of Baldur fail to paint a very full picture of him, relatable at all, really. Something that many pagans, myself included, um, attempt to do with the gods and goddesses. We find their fallacies and mistakes to be something tangible in a way. But the gods, while existing in sacred space and time, are not too unlike a, all of us. While there are many sacred figures mentioned in passing throughout the lore, Baldur is by far one of the most important figures that we hear so little about. Which may both the question, why? Was the ultimate purity and perfection of Baldur in the Norse myths meant to provide the people at that time with a sort of, quote, Christ-like figure to revere? thereby making the conversion to Christianity that much easier for the pagan population at the time? Were the gory details of Baldur withheld by the skalds and poets out of fear of being killed themselves for perpetuating ridiculous pagan stories? Ultimately, who knows? Because at the end of the day, all of this here, well, this is just one heathen's opinion, my opinion, and just something that I wanted to share with all of you and see what you all thought. So, whether you only view Baldur as the noble, the shining, the most beloved of the gods, whether you see him as the tortured madman of sorts seeking vengeance on his mother and solace from a curse, or if you find him to be that passion-driven demigod bound and determined to do everything he holds so love and dear, even at the cost of his own life, regardless of how you see him, he still remains a powerful figure in our lore, worthy of great songs to be sung and tales to be told. Hail Baldur, best and brightest of the gods. I want to thank you all for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed the video for me. As I mentioned earlier, please let me know down in the comments what you thought of this and if you'd like to see some more content about gods or any other subject in this sort of form. Please also don't forget to show your support by liking this video, commenting, and sharing it around. It really helps the channel grow and it is greatly, greatly appreciated. So until next time, hail to you all.